you can see from these demonstrations is that actually with some very crude equipment, just a handheld rotometer and just count, of course, not extremely accurate, we still can get a good accuracy of the measurements of these masses because the bigger mass was calibrated on the ground as being 80 grams and we were uh, at 74 and 75, so with an average of 74 and a half, which is within about uh, 5 six percent of uh, the real mass and also on P and 4 we have an average actually of about 49 uh, with on the ground mass was calibrated as 50 grams so this was actually a very good uh, measurement in that case so we can see that uh, even with crude measurements we can indeed determine the mass of an object even in weightlessness so thank you all for following these demonstrations and uh, of course I'm now open for any questions that you may have Thank you very much, Frank, for the exciting demonstration. I would like to go to Barcelona for your first question of today. Barcelona, please ask your question. Hello, Melanie. Uh, I have here by right my side the uh, student that's going to ask a question to Frank Devine. His name is Sarah, and she will be here right now to ask a question. Can you hear me? Question. Can hear you, Barcelona. Can hear you, Barcelona. Hello, my name is. Hello, my name is Sara. I'm from Yesvindavo, Lleida. And the question is The concepts of weight and mass are not easy to grasp. The demonstration was very useful. Can you help us to further understand these concepts in your own words? I can try to, describe, try to describe the difference between mass and weight in uh, my own words. Mass is property of any object. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are on the Earth or on Jupiter or on the Moon. It's basically how much matter there is in an object. Weight is related to a gravitational field. You need to have gravity in order to have weight. Uh, on the Earth, we have what we call like 1G, because the Earth is attracting us uh, with a certain gravitational field, and because of that, we can weigh a certain mass in this environment. Uh, if we weigh the same mass in another environment, for example, on the Moon, there is less attract attraction between those two uh, objects. The gravitational field is less, so the weight will be less. On the Moon, actually, we weigh about 1.6. Uh, also here on the space station, we are weightlessness because we are still attracted by the Earth, but we are in constant free fall. We are constantly falling towards the Earth. So there is nothing that stops us from falling. If on the Earth you're standing on a scale, uh, it indicates a certain weight because the scale pushes back towards you and you can't fall deeper. Here there is nothing that stops us from falling. Our spaceship, the ISS, we ourselves, everything which is in here is falling together constantly towards the Earth and nothing is stopping us. And that's why we are weightless in this environment. Thank you very much, Frank. We now go to Mecklen. Mecklen, please ask your question to Frank Tavina. Yes, hello. It's a very special uh, greet to Frank here from Belgium. We have um, Jeroen who will ask his question. Frank, we see that the hardware you used is a bit different from the one we have in the Take Your Class room into Space Kit. Could you explain why? Space hardware is always a little bit different than the hardware uh, on the ground. Uh, first of all, it needs to be qualified for space and it needs to be qualified to be used in this uh, very specific environment. Uh, that is one uh, aspect. Secondly, as well, of course, since we are weight business here, uh, this spring or the mass does not tend to fall or to go up or down. We can actually put this device in any direction here and it will still always work the same way. Because again, the mass here does not have any weight. When you do this experiment in your classroom, of course, the mass does have a weight. So it will be influenced by the gravitational field of the Earth. That is why specifically in the classroom, the experiment that you have, 
needed to take that into account. But still, the properties stay the same. Still, you can still measure that the weight with the spring constant, these uh, equations still stay the same, and you can still measure the same effect in your classroom. Thank you very much. We now go to Milan. Milan, please ask your question to Frank. Hello, my name is Beatrice and I'm from Milan, Italy. Uh, my question is, I know that you will perform later during your mission the demonstration exploring capillarity. In this regard, I would like to know whether plants grow differently on the ISS than on Earth. Are they affected by a different behavior of capillarity? Thank you very much for uh, your question. Uh, uh, I don't know if that is actually the case. I know that we do some uh, plant experiments here on board of uh, the Columbus uh, module here, our European scientific lab on board of the ISS. We actually have a facility called BioLab and in previous flights and also in the future flights, we will do plant experiment growth uh, experiments in there. One of the experiments we did, for example, was Waco, which looked at the root growth of uh, certain plants in orbit in weightlessness, because it's thought that plants have kind of a sensor that senses gravity, and because of that, they know where the earth is and they grow their roots down towards the earth where the water is and uh, the leaves grow up. Uh, this is kind of what we believe, and if this is the case, then of course in microgravity, when there is no gravity field, uh, then they, this should be uh, different. Uh, maybe this is also due to some capillarity effect, but uh, that I don't know. But for sure, it's a good question, and for sure, maybe uh, later on we can uh, uh, design some experiments to see if that is the case. Maybe it will you as a future scientist who will be working on these questions. Thank you very much. We have time for one more question. We're going to Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki, please ask your question to Frank. Hi, I'm Fibos from Thessaloniki. I read that the astronauts measure their weight with an apparatus that is based on the measurement of their period of oscillation. How does it work exactly? The uh, in-space uh, measurement uh, basically works the same as uh, this measurement device here. Only the mark here is uh, then replaced by the astronaut. The spring, of course, a spring that is stronger because otherwise it would uh, max out uh, immediately. And thirdly, the measurement, the method of measurement, is much more accurate. It's an automatic. Uh, method of measurement. But for the rest, it's much the same. We lay on a kind of a spring uh, device uh, that we lock to a certain position, so that would be a loaded position like this one. And then at the, with a certain uh, action, we release the, the spring, and we start going up and down. Of course, not at a fast rate like this, because uh, that would make us sick, but we go up and down on a slower rate. And then there is an automatic measurement device that measures the period. And again, this spring is very much calibrated on the Earth. We know very well the characteristics of this spring. Uh, we also can calibrate it on orbit with the mass that we know. And then when we have the characteristics of this spring and we have the period, then we can also determine the mass of the astronaut. Well, thank you very much. This is Melanie back at the European Space Agency, and we'd like to thank Frank very much for the demonstration and for his time today, and we'd like to thank all our participants in Barcelona, Mechlin, Milan, and Thessaloniki. Thank you. Thank you all very much, and uh, thank you for joining us here uh, today on board of the International Space Station for uh, this uh, mass and weight uh, demonstration. As you can see, it's very fun to be in weightlessness. It's very fun to float around in the space station, uh, and I hope that uh, this will uh, help you as well and stimulate you in uh, following scientific careers, because we really need that in Europe. All the best from the International